Welcome to the journey in this fourth week of lockdown. Today I want to reflect on a very difficult and painful topic, one very much part of our societal life, gender-based violence. And I'm aware that I'm a man standing talking about gender-based violence. We have seen a dramatic surge in gender-based violence since this lockdown began. The stress of the lockdown exacerbates the violence that already exists in our society. The stress levels of abusers and their anxieties are pushed up at this time. Their partners cannot escape and therefore they are even more likely to be victims. Stress levels are so heightened because of the fear of the economic anxiety and even a sense of powerless that many people are experiencing. Abusive men in a situation in which they feel powerless are more likely to try to exercise power over their partner and their children and to act with increased aggression. The contained environment during lockdown without any other outlets means that frustration levels rise even more quickly. The sharp spike in gender-based violence resulting from isolation and lockdown is being seen all around the world. In South Africa, we have an extremely high level of gender-based violence and so our situation is maybe even more acute. The National Gender-Based Violence Command Center received more than 87,000 calls in the first week of this lockdown. The situation can only get worse as this is extended and the lockdown unfolds. Friends, you know, Sonke Gender Justice has said that women are stuck between two pandemics, the coronavirus and the pandemic of gender-based violence. And the concern now is that women are even less able to access help than usual. They are with their partner 24-7 and cannot even make phone calls without being overheard. Children are also at greater risk of being abused physically, emotionally and sexually. Time away from home, at school each day and the contact with other adults who might notice there is abuse has been removed, leaving them vulnerable to abuse in their own homes. So what can we do? A piece in the online Daily Maverick recently suggested that we try to stay connected with people we know who are vulnerable. Don't ask them directly about abuse or violence, because if an abusive partner is close by and overhears that question, that may put the person at even greater risk of a violent outburst. Check in perhaps daily and ask them how they are. This provides the possibility for the person to confide in you if their abuser is out of earshot. It also helps them to feel that they are not isolated, that there is somebody who cares. Keep a list, if you can, of relevant numbers that can be offered to victims. Don't ignore what you hear in your neighborhood. If you hear someone crying or screaming, call the police and let them investigate. We also need to push for the establishment of more shelters and economic support for women so that they can get out of abusive situations and also take their children out of such situations. If you are being abused, look for an opportunity to call one of the helplines. The Gender-Based Violence Command Center has a free number. They even have a please call me that you can send them and they will call you back. These numbers will all be available at the end of this talk. People opposing woman abuse power also have a helpline and can offer legal 
and emotional support. If you don't feel free to call any of them and you want spiritual support, feel free to contact the Jesuit Institute. The number two will be at the end of this talk. This problem, friends, is a deep systemic problem in our society. We need a comprehensive response to the immediate crisis in lockdown. But we also need to grapple with and address the root causes of gender-based violence. And religious communities play a very important role in doing this. So many women and children find themselves in life-threatening danger in what should be a place of refuge in their very own homes. Let's work together as we can in these conditions to help where we can. <laughs>